All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And the first thing I wanted to get out of the way this morning was this whole Isabella Merced controversy that has hit the internet. Now, I shared a quote two videos ago where I shared a quote that I found online and I shared it in my video. And then I found out the quote wasn't 100% correct. The first half was correct. She actually did talk about the male audience when it comes to uh, Madam Webb. And, and my response to that would be, where were the women? Why are the women not showing up to those movies? Okay, That's kind of my response to the first half of that quote. The second half was not true. That's something somebody made up and wanted people to share it, and I did share it. But I came back in the very next video, and I told you guys it was wrong. I'm always going to do that. I'm, my intention is never to share false information or to mislead people. Uh, that is not my job here, and I am not part of the media. But I woke up this morning to a quote that somebody sent me, and quite a few people tagged me in this, and I am not the aggressor in this situation. And uh, let's talk about this. So here is the quote that she put out there. Uh, this was at 1.45 a.m., which is kind of weird. And she doesn't have a check mark. I don't know why an actress who's playing in this big movie has not locked her account down. She goes, I'm just existing and people are spreading fake quotes and believing them with no real source. We need lessons on media li literacy. This is crazy. What's crazy is that she likes to blame the male audience. Okay, I'm just going to put that out there right away. But you, you have to understand not everything is going to be correct. At least I came out and corrected it. I didn't mislead people. It was not my, you know, it was not my purpose to mislead. I don't want any type of hate whatsoever sent her way at all. Okay, guys? So anybody who sees this, do not go after her. There is no reason to ever attack people personally. It's not going to happen. I always share the things that I find. And if they're wrong, I'm always going to correct them. And this is one of those things that was half wrong. And so I've already corrected it. There's nothing else I can do. Um, you know, to those people who are all up in arms about this, but are okay with people making death, th death threats against my family and saying that I'm homophobic and, and uh, um, um, transphobic, uh, you know, things go both ways. So there were definitely quotes. There was a quote shared about me just the other day that was totally photoshopped and I'm not, you know, getting on here, you know, telling everybody they need to do better due diligence. I'm calling those people out, but it's, those things are going to happen. I'm sorry, you're in the public eye, uh, especially someone like her. She's much more in the public eye than I am. Those things are going to happen. So let's look at some other stuff here. First of all, Screen Rant posted this the other day, just yesterday, and I had to laugh at this. I literally laughed out loud. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom just reached a box office milestone that the DCEU hadn't passed in some time, ending the franchise on an overdue win. Guys, there is no win for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This movie lost the studio hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? There, there, there is nothing about this movie in any stretch of the imagination that was a positive. The only thing that you could even look at as a positive is that it is the most viewed movie. And more people went to see this uh, than they have since anything since the first Aquaman, okay? That's it. But it still lost the studio hundreds of millions of dollars. And this movie did get a China release. It actually performed worse. It actually performed worse where it was shown than Black Adam did. There is no win in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Uh, and for them to try and... And, and uh, you know, this is, this is good. This is the kind of stuff we're going to see happen with Superman Legacy. You're going to see the media come out and support Superman Legacy like you've never seen before. And they're going to twist things to make them look more positive than they are. And when the movie comes out and doesn't do well, we're going to see more articles like this all over the place. I'm just warning you guys now. Another big thing that happened yesterday is that Dan Lin was tapped to replace Scott Stuber as Netflix Film Boss exclusive. Uh, the Ride Back founder has worked uh, as a producer on Sherlock Holmes, It, and the Lego Movie franchises. Okay, 
So a lot of people were up in arms about this guy because he apparently made a statement about Snyder fans, Snyder bots, that sort of a thing. And from what I heard and what I saw, it, it came from several different places. And yes, he made a comment, but someone else made it about uh, Snyder fans, not specifically Dan himself. Now, I haven't been able to confirm either way exactly what happened, but there is a quote out there, and I wasn't able to grab it for some reason. Uh, I came across it. I should have screenshotted it uh, so I could show you what it said, But uh, and I, someone else said something else about it, and I wish I would have grabbed both of those things. But we don't know what is going to happen with him. You know, some people are afraid that this is going to interfere with with the Snyderverse being restored on Netflix. And honestly, I'm going to be very 100% honest with you guys. I don't think there is a chance, a ch- even a small chance, that the Snyderverse will be restored on Netflix. I think our only hope of having it restored is by a formal movie studio picking up Warner Brothers along with DC. And the only chance I think we have with that is with Universal. There are already people that have worked on, you know, these past, past DCU films, DCEU films that are now at Universal. And I think that's our only real chance of having anything done. And I really honestly don't want Netflix to get it because they don't sell physical media. So we're probably never, ever going to get a physical release on something like Rebel Moon. Uh, the Sherlock Holmes movies have not been released. Um, no, not Sherlock, the, the ones with uh, the girl from Stranger Things. I forget what it was called. But these things don't get releases. There was a movie, uh, several movies over the last couple of years that were big movies on, on Netflix, and they just haven't been released on physical media. I want stuff to be released in theaters and on physical media. So my only true hope is that it gets picked up by a real studio. So here again are some more numbers in regards to the old DCU versus the DCU post-Aquaman. You can see that when Snyder was there, and he was also uh, executive producer, I believe, on Aquaman. So he was actually there through uh, everything before Hamada took over. And you can see that all these films did extremely well. In fact, these movies made more money than the early films for Marvel. And then you could see as soon as Hamada came in and changed everything, everything just bombed from there on. And so you can see that there in the the numbers. Black Adam started to have people come back because there was hope uh, because they had brought Henry Cavill back. And then they pulled the rug out from right underneath us right after that. And this doesn't have the other films, uh, and it should because they they did even worse than uh, Shazam did. So... It's really sad to see what they did to the whole DCEU. Now, DC Film News posted this yesterday. Now, today is Superman's birthday. Uh, Superman turned something like 78 today, if I'm not mistaken. And this is something that Film News posted and said tomorrow. So it looks like there's going to be something dropping today. Uh, If it does, I will report on it. Now, I will be going to see Dune later, so... If you're not subscribed and you haven't hit that notification bell, you might miss something today if big news drops. And I will get it out as soon as I can if there is big news that drops. And I hope this is the logo right here. If they're going to use the Kingdom Come logo, I hope this is actually what it looks like on the suit. It's the only thing that I think would be doable. If they do the black where the yellow is, I'm not going to like that at all. So Anthony Kerrigan has come out and says he is excited about Nicholas Holt playing Les Luthor in Superman Legacy. I'm so excited for him from one ball guide to another, but yeah, he's going to crush it. Uh, hopefully they've seen the script and they're basing this on, on what the script is. I could see Holt possibly doing well as Lex Luthor, but I just hope James Gunn takes this job seriously. So there was a lot of uh, interesting posts about this uh, over, over overnight. And Alex Ross, so I follow Alex Ross. Uh, I love his art. I have some of his his uh, comics, uh, Kingdom Come. I have a, a standalone Justice League story in an oversized comic as well as a, something just titled Batman. And his art is absolutely stunning. And he actually directed this towards James Gunn, which was interesting. This was a direct, uh, a direct basically, uh, he's bashing James Gunn here, guys. Uh, This is what this appears to be. 
but he has art here that mirrors a lot of the stuff that that uh, Zack Snyder did with Man of Steel and in Batman vs. Superman, as well as uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. So you could see those photos here, and he's saying that basically that Zack Snyder is the blueprint, and he supports Zack Snyder. Uh, he has since apparently deleted this, uh, but this is making the rounds everywhere right now. So I don't think there are a lot of people actually in James Gunn's corner at this stage. Now, Jeffrey Wright says he has spoken to Matt Reeves about exploring Gordon's private life in the Batman 2. Batman wears his cowl, but in many ways, Gordon wears a mask too. All right, now I take offense to this, okay? I have been reading Batman comics for 40 years. Gordon does not wear a mask on his personal life. His personal life has always been out in front with his daughter, Barbara, and also with his wife, Sarah. If they change this in any way, you are going to piss off a lot of people. And this is almost, you can see where this is headed, and that is not going to be good if they go a route that totally twists who who Gordon actually is. Uh, Please stay true to the story. Please stay true to the lore. Don't mess it up in some way for for some reason, okay? Uh, And I will take note on the Batman 2, to this day, the Batman 2 script does not exist. There's no exact start date on the filming, and no cast has been announced. This movie has been pushed to the background no matter what anybody says. There is nothing happening right now actively with the Batman 2 that has made it to the public eye. It is has been pushed to the back of the bookcase. Now, yesterday there was there were some rumors going around about the budget of Superman Legacy being 364 million, which would be astronomical. Okay. Astronomical. And somebody asked him, hey James, this article says your Superman budget is 364 million. True? False. He said, absolutely not. How in the world do they think they know what our budget is? Which is a good point. They're being so secretive about this whole thing, we don't know what kind of money is being spent on Superman Legacy. Number one, it is definitely not being spent on the cast. None of those people are getting paid a lot of money for their roles. They're just not. It looks like a C-list cast uh, for a CW show. There are no major stars, and they're definitely not spending the money on the talent. So that means the money has to be put into the production. And where they're doing this, I've reported on this already, they're saving money where this is being filmed. They need to put that money towards the uh, VFX and other things to make the movie look as good as they possibly can. Now, Alex Ross also posted this this morning, and this guy, is his art is just absolutely amazing, what he's able to capture. And he said, Thursday, Superman, it is Superman's birthday today, and that's what this post is referring to. Now, James Gunn posted on threads about this, and I thought this was funny. Uh, This is coming from a guy who said that Henry Cavill was too old to play Superman. He said, happy 78th birthday to the greatest superhero of all time, Superman. Remember, age is just a number. (laughs) That is golden coming directly from James Gunn, especially after his comments about Henry Cavill. All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, That's my update uh, for this morning. If Definitely, if more breaking news does get released today, I will be covering it in a follow-up video. But one of my videos later today is going to be Dune as soon as I get back and can get my review up. That's going to be up this evening. Uh, I'm seeing it late this afternoon, and then I do have an appointment at 6 p.m. that I have to be at, and then I will uh, be, be doing that review and have that up. So if any more breaking news comes out, it will be prior to me going to the theater or after I post the review. Uh, But if anything big happens, I will be reporting on it. All right, guys, I do appreciate all the support. We will see you on the next video.